So the agenda for today's webinar, uh, we're going to start with uh, an introduction to both Redgate and Aspira uh, before looking at some background to why you, you would look to migrate from Oracle to SQL Server and the kind of things that you need to do uh, to your database uh, before that migration. Uh, within this part there will be a demonstration of the deployment suite for Oracle, uh, which is Redgate software. Uh, I then pass over to Mihao and Aspira uh, to talk you through the process of migrating from Oracle to SQL Server, uh, in particular looking at SQL ways uh, and uh, looking at some of the sort of the pitfalls to avoid uh, and some tips on on that and how Aspira would actually manage that whole process for you. Uh, we'll finish the session with a, a Q and A. Uh, so again, please feel free to type some questions in now uh, and as we go along uh, or wait until that session and we can answer your, your questions then. So uh, who are Redgate Software? Uh, so we were founded in 1999. We're a privately held uh, UK company based in Cambridge uh, with about 200 employees. Uh, things are going quite well. We're growing at 40% annually. Uh, our main focus and history has been within the SQL Server uh, tools. Uh, but our Oracle tools and other, other areas are growing rapidly. Uh, we have a strong focus on, on usability uh, and we try and make uh, all of your interactions with Redgate uh, as easy as possible throughout evaluation, uh, purchasing the tools and, de and deploying the tools. And we offer free trials which are fully functional of all of our tools. I'm just going to pass over to Mihao now uh, to give you a little bit of background about Aspira. Uh, hello everyone, and Aspire Systems is like the, fir the first point will be very similar to Redgate because we were founded in 1999 as well, and uh, at this particular moment we have representative offices in the United States and the United Kingdom, and our ma ma major development facility is located in, Min in Minsk, Belarus. Uh, this time we have around 40 uh, full-time migration experts, and uh, um, the only competency and the only service we are offering is, uh, is the migration, basically. And we are offering both database migration and application migration as well. And uh, like at this particular moment, uh, our one, one core product, SQL Ways, supports the largest number of supported source and target databases. And uh, at this moment, we have hundreds of satisfied customers and uh, from all industries and uh, different segments of, of the market, and uh, including Fortune 500 country, uh, companies as well. So let's move to this uh, background, migration background slide. And um, the first argument for such conversion is basically lowering license costs. Of course, such expenses may vary from, uh, based on multiple factors, and sometimes prices are really individual. But the tendency is clear, as so SQL Server license costs are cheaper in general. Uh, decreasing the maintenance cost is one more strong point. It is less exp expensive to employ it or to outsource .NET and SQL Server experts in case your team needs some consultancy or database development. development. And the following three points can be characterized as simplifying the use of your database. One advantage of installing a SQL Server system is you are joining a growing Microsoft SQL Server community. You will find many colleagues all over the globe willing to discuss the problems and solutions in, in different SQL, SQL Server user groups, websites, training se sessions. And in addition, Microsoft has, uh, hosts its own uh, training sessions and solution center available 24 hours and seven days per week. So uh, Microsoft supports its products and releases uh, updates and uh, patches for its systems on a regular basis. So your system can remain functional all, all the time. And uh, let me pass the word, to, uh, the word to our Redgate partners. Okay, so I'm just going to pass over to Tom Harris, uh, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that you should do prior to uh, migration, uh, and then uh, a demonstration of the deployment suite for Oracle. Uh, okay. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Tom, I'm the head of Oracle Tools at Redgate. Uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about some of the challenges around uh, Oracle database uh, development and then uh, show you uh, one of our products and just mention briefly the other tools. 
So uh, if you guys are working as Oracle developers, you'll be fairly familiar of one of the main challenges of Oracle development in terms of needing to uh, deploy or update uh, different instances uh, with changes. So typically moving more recent work, i.e. new work in development through your different environments, test, UAT, and production, and then also possibly moving uh, changes the other way, so taking uh, subsets of production data, moving them into test to investigate issues. Uh, and this is a, it's not a new problem, it's been a problem that's been around for, for many, many years, uh, and it's just an area that Redkit has a lot of experience in from SQL Server, and so more recently we've focused on making some tools to automate that process uh, as part of something which we now call the Oracle Deployment Suite. Uh, and in fitting this together with the, the sort of uh, the migration story, if you're moving platforms, uh, obviously you're going to need to have uh, a chosen environment that you're going to treat as your master. Uh, and probably to get that master environment together before you potentially move it uh, off Oracle to SQL Server, you're going to want to know exactly what is in it. Does it reflect uh, the latest test environment, the latest development environment, and the latest production environment? And so. Uh, Let's just try to think about the different approaches you might have for getting that environment uh, into a good shape. Uh, so I guess historically the, the, the most arduous way of doing this is to just write all the scripts by hand. So whenever there is a change, uh, whenever you need to uh, make a change to a stored procedure or uh, adjust a table, maybe change a constraint, add a column, rename something, uh, you write a little uh, migration script uh, to accompany that change. Potentially, you put that migration script into source control. You hand over that mi migration script over to a DBA. He checks it over, and then potentially he executes it against the new environment, whether that be test, UAT, or production. Uh, fine, uh, but I would say uh, hard work uh, can get uh, very time consuming. You can hit bottlenecks with uh, the, you know, the DBA not having time to run your scripts, not liking your scripts, uh, and so, uh, you know, time-consuming uh, process. Uh, so some development uh, organizations get around that problem just by handing over the whole issue to the DBAs, and so basically saying, uh, we'll give you our development uh, instance, uh, and we'd like you to, to be in, in charge of propagating all changes uh, into other environments. and so. The responsibility lies with the DBA team to maintain all the database instances. Uh, again, but, you know, can work. Uh, some of the same problems that you'd hit with uh, example A. Uh, as a development team, you want to move forward quickly, uh, and you're now, uh, in some sense, constrained by the capacity of the DBA team. If they've got issues with the production servers, they'll probably take priority over migrating your more recent uh, development changes into a test environment. So, uh, you know, you, you can make it work, but you're going to be juggling resources. Uh, a third approach that we've definitely seen is looking at test environments is people create the test database from scratch every time. So rather than actually executing update or, or, or smaller subset scripts, they simply build the whole test database uh, uh, from, from nothing. Uh, and to do that, they normally have one large master script which they uh, uh, rev. So when anything changes, they update this master script, which allows them to rebuild the whole data database from scratch. Uh, there's a lot of work involved in maintaining that master script. Uh, if anything goes wrong, you can't create the database at all. You can't, you can't, you know, move forward. Uh, so. You know, you need quite good control over who changes that script, uh, and you need quite good control to make sure that the changes that they make uh, don't break things. So you've got a configuration issue. Uh, but we have seen organizations successfully uh, operating in that fashion. The second issue they have is that they normally want to put data into the test database as well. And so typically, they're going to have a mixture of uh, schema scripts, so DDL, and data scripts within this master script. And those two are of very different sizes. They can have large amounts of data which need to go into the test database. And so the storage of the, uh, the test data becomes an issue. They don't want to store it together with the DDL. Uh, and so they're looking for different ways of uh, trying to incorporate the test data into the, into the test database. Uh, 
And so where Redgate comes in and other third party vendors is uh, trying to produce some really nice products which will allow you to uh, investigate the differences between uh, your different Oracle environments or equally your different SQL Server environments, uh, uh, allow you to see where, where your databases are different both in terms of schema and data and then allow you to deploy any changes. So for example, if you have made a change to a table in terms of schema or data, uh, using our tools, you can very rapidly uh, build a, a reliable, high quality uh, SQL script and either execute that script or uh, save it off and send it over to the DBA team or whoever is responsible for maintaining the instance uh, that you want to update. So what I'll do now is I'll try and jump in and show you uh, a tool that we call Schema Compare for Oracle, very obvious name. Uh, basically, Schema Compare for Oracle uh, allows you to uh, basically diff uh, to Oracle database instances. So I'll just show you the setup. Uh, as Joe mentioned at the beginning, Redgate takes great pride in trying to make tools which are incredibly easy to use. I was going to say pretty, but that's not really the point. I mean, they, do, they normally end up looking quite pretty, uh, but that's not our, our drive. Our drive is to make them uh, simple, uh, essentially because our business model is driven through people downloading our software and trying it and that driving the purchase. So uh, we need that everybody who downloads the software to have a great experience, and that doesn't happen if we make tools which are complicated and require people to either get in contact with us or read user manuals or search on the internet as to how to configure the tool. So uh, hopefully anybody who does download it gets up and running very quickly. Uh, so this screen is basically where I choose which databases I want to compare. Uh, standard credentials for connecting to the database. Uh, you can use TNS or you can do it manually. Uh, and then you essentially choose a couple of schemas that you want to, to dip. Uh, Schema compare is simply uh, going to compare the schemas. So there's no data involved in this stage. We have a separate tool, uh, which is also named very simply called Data Compare for Oracle, and that does a similar task to this tool, but looks at the data stored within the tables. So once I'm happy with my setup, I will simply go ahead and compare my two schemas. In this case, I've got the classic scenario of a development schema and a test schema. Uh, they're both on the same uh, database. Uh, that may or may not be the case in your environment. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I simply hit the OK button, and it goes off and compares. Uh, there's a bit of trickery there. I've obviously already done the comparison, so it actually has already got the results for me. I just wanted to save a bit of time. But obviously, the amount of time it takes to do the comparison depends on how big your database is, but we have run it successfully with uh, thousands and thousands of database objects. So you get a very, very nice graphical display now, which allows you to see what is going on. Uh, at the top of the screen, I get lists of the objects within the databases, uh, and they're categorized according to whether there are any differences, uh, whether they're just on one side, i.e. just in the development environment, or just in the test environment, or in fact already identical. And essentially all I'm needing to do now is select an object and investigate what is different within it. And I'll just show you quickly what happens at the bottom of the screen. We get a really nice side-by-side -side view uh, of the DDL or the SQL for that table. Uh, it's obviously color coded and syntax highlighted, uh, and so it very quickly allows me to see what's different here. Uh, it's the development version of the widget prices table, and there are some new columns which are highlighted, uh, and there are some subtle differences. So, for example, this column here in development has been changed name. It used to be called price, and they've changed it to price underscore. Uh, everything else about it is the same, and then there are three new columns: the date valid from, the date valid to, and the active. Uh, and constraint changes as well. So basically all I'm doing here is deciding whether I want to uh, move those changes from the development environment to the test environment. If that's what I want to do, I simply select the object. Uh, and I pr pretty much just go through each of the objects uh, and see where the differences are and decide whether I want to uh, deploy those objects. There's a bunch of new objects, so these are new objects in development, and I'm going to take those so there are some new indexes and tables. There's one object which is just in the test environment. There's a test function. I'm going to leave that where it is. Uh, and once I'm happy with my set of objects, I can simply deploy them using the deployment wizard. And the deployment wizard allows me to build that script. 
so I can quickly whiz through uh, and show you the script. So this is really the one of the most powerful things about the tool is it creates you a migration script to move those changes. And this is something that, you know, if you're without a tool, you will be doing this by hand. And the problem with doing it by hand is it takes time and you can make mistakes. It's fiddly uh, work. And it's also not particularly exciting work. I mean, you're really following rules saying, okay, we've added a column, I need to alter the table and uh, add the column and change the name or whatever it is. Uh, and all of that stuff is just taken care of by the tool. And so once I've reviewed the script, I can review it as SQL, or I can actually just review it in English. We have an English sort of representation which just walks you through the different steps of the script you're taking, uh, and a set of warnings in case there's anything that you might need to think about uh, before you run the script. So for example, in this case, there's a column truncation, and it's warning you about possible data loss. Uh, and so once you've reviewed the script and you're happy with it, you might save it off. Uh, or you might just go ahead and execute it. Obviously, for the demo, I'm going to execute it. Uh, and so I'm going to run that against the test database to update the test database to reflect all the objects that were in development. That's been executed very quickly, and that goes off, and it retrieves the database again. And I just let it whir away for a minute or two uh, so that I can show you that the two instances are now uh, in sync with regard to schema, which is obviously one of the main tasks that uh, uh, people are doing on a fairly regular basis. And normally once they run this tool and they're happy with the schema, uh, they're going to search the problem of data. And when I talk about data, we're not typically talking about production data. We're not talking about uh, you know uh, gigabytes of data. We're normally talking about uh, lookup data, configuration data, data that is required to allow your database to operate. So um, country codes, product paths, all, all the small amounts of data. Uh, which you also associate uh, with your schema, and you have exactly the same scenario when that data changes. Uh, so you can imagine that you start, you introduce a new product, uh, and you update a table which stores your product information, and there's related data associated with the product, and all those data changes need to make their way through your different environments. And so uh, we make a tool called uh, Data Compare Oracle, which has broadly speaking, the same look and feel uh, as this tool, but it simply allows you to compare the data within your tables. And again, uh, it generates the SQL script. So rather than having to hand write your update, insert, delete script, uh, you can allow our tool to automate that process for you. And so the two tools used in, uh, uh, used in conjunction give you a really nice way of uh, moving schema and data changes between different so just to, to show you that it does actually do what I said it does, uh, we can look at the table that we looked at initially, which was the widget prices table, I believe. Uh, so all the objects that I wanted to synchronize have been synchronized, and the widget prices table that we looked at initially has now got exactly the same structure in test as it has in development. So the price underscore column has been renamed in test, new columns have been added, and the constraints have been moved over appropriately. And so that's it. And so in a nutshell, the tool is really about saving uh, developers and DBAs time when they are uh, going to be moving changes between environments. Uh, and as James has said, you can download the resource from our website. You can use it for a couple of weeks. And do let us know how you get on. I'll hand back to James uh, to carry on with the rest of the presentation. OK, so. Obviously, we, we wanted to show those tools uh, as something that, that you should uh, consider using uh, in preparing your uh, database before the migration. Uh, so I'm going to pass over to Mihal now, uh, who's actually going to talk you through uh, that process of migrating. Now that we have our, our Oracle database aligned, and we want to move this information over to a, a SQL database. Uh, so I'm just going to hand uh, the screen over to him as well. Okay, Mihal, uh, you should now have control of the screen. Just one second, yeah.
Okay, I hope you all can see it. Okay, so let's start with, with this uh, migration risks. Basically, I think this is one of the major stop factors from, from proceeding with this migration. And uh, uh, you can see on your screen a list of these uh, major uh, migration risks uh, usually our customers uh, face before the migration. And um, the, like business logic elements and incompatibility and SQL language dialects differences, Oracle PIL SQL language differences are among the essential risks and stop factors and uh, of course all these uh, all these elements are crucial for correct operability of each database so such concerns, concerns and doubts are absolutely grounded and uh, uh, reasonable and but the good news is that uh, our tool has solution for all these major problematic cases and let's move to the next slide which will show you why SQL waste should be considered for, for for this migration and first of all you please take a look at the supported elements uh, of the tool so here is a list of uh, business objects and uh, Business, uh, business logic elements were supporting during the migration. Store procedures and functions are among like, the most crucial ones and usually pe people are facing the most difficult difficulties with these two. And uh, the good news is that we are able to achieve up to 100% automation for the migration of store procedures and functions. Also we are, mig uh, we are converting triggers, DDL, uh, data, SQL queries and scripts and SQL statements. Okay, so here is a list of major benefits of, of our solutions and uh, the first one is that we are able to achieve 100% uh, automation of the entire migration process. Usually, some, usually we require some iterations of the product but uh, the final result of 100% automation is possible and actually each project the final goal is to, is to achieve this 100% automation. Uh, fast customization is another one and as we we are able to provide uh, necessary fixes or uh, kind of services and pre-sale engagement we um, we fully understand that nobody is willing to pay for 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 a black box and uh, everyone is uh, planning to, to see some some uh, evaluation results before making any any, uh, any investments and that is why we are offering a free of charge configuration assistance during the evaluation period and during this time uh, our customers are able to, to uh, try the tool to understand whether it's uh, feasible or not to migrate this software and to, to see how effective and uh, efficient the software could be. Uh, low cost. As, as I mentioned before, we are trying to achieve 100% automation of the entire migration process and basically this, is, um, this strategy is, uh, is allowing us to, to save up to 70% up to of traditional migration budget because uh, minimal work uh, is done manually and the rest is done by the product. And um, Optimized conversion. We're not using any third-party libraries or middleware during the migration process and this approach guarantees that you, you can finally you will get a clean, uh, an absolutely clean target code. Uh, as at, at Aspire we're usually uh, offering two engagement models for the migration process. The first one is a fixed price conversion which, which we usually call full cycle migration. It means that uh, we are taking the schema, the database schema, and we are analyzing all the source code beforehand, and we are providing some estimations for this work. As soon as the budget is approved, we are starting working, and as a result of this uh, work, uh, our customers receive 100% clean and converted code. And of course, we are offering uh, several months of post-project warranty period to ensure that all possible bugs or problems are fixed with, uh, for free during this period. 
The, sec the second option is general SQL race licensing when our customers are just pur purchasing a license for the product and they are completing the migration on their end and we are just offering necessary configuration assistance and uh, support. So let, let me pass the word to Pavel Leonov who is our mi migration con uh, consultant and he, he will show you uh, a short demo of the product where we will try to, to, to make a quick migration of sample Oracle database. Uh, hello. Uh, <clears throat> uh, there are several tools uh, which uh, are provided by our company for uh, conversion of the database or scripts. So one of them is the SQL Waste Wizard. Uh, this tool is used for the database conversion. As a source, it uses the ODBC connection to the source database. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, we are using Oracle ODBC connection. Uh, <clears throat> after you specify next on choose a source database uh, page of SQL Waste Wizard, our tool collects all the information about the source database uh, and <coughs> will provide it to you in a tree view in uh, our next steps. On the choose a target database uh, page, you specify the target database for the conversion. Uh, this is a SQL server at this time. Uh, so <coughs> uh, you specify all the uh, information as server the database, target database, username and password here as well. Uh, our tool uh, uses this information to build batch files with the uh, commands that uses native tools to load scripts and data into the target database. For SQL server, server this will be a BCP command, uh, BCP tool and a SQL CMD tool. Uh, you can see here uh, all the objects that our tool uh, exported from the source database. All of them are <coughs> specified in groups tables and uh, each object in its own schema. And the same for the rest objects. You can see the variety of objects that are supported uh, by our tool uh, for Oracle to SQL Server conversion here. After specifying the objects to convert, we go next. There are lots of uh, different options in our tool and actually uh, there is no enough time to talk about all of them. Uh, but uh, the most common that they are commonly used uh, uh, is uh, global data type mapping and the local data type mapping that uh, allow you to specify the target data, data type. If you don't agree with the default uh, data type conversion uh, that, that is provided in our tool. There are, there are several, also ser several options that allow you to, uh, to d divide the uh, data export and the uh, SQL export as well from source to target database. On the specify export file options page, you need to specify the export directory where all the files will be created, uh, the data files and the batch scripts and also the DDL scripts for the objects. And we go next. So uh, here on the review, the selections page, you can see some information about the object you, uh, you convert, the information about the target server. <clears throat> Sorry, there's some some problems too. There are some technical issues, just a second.
I'm just moving through all the steps uh, in the wizard that I already showed you. Uh, just a second, I need to make some changes. Uh, so actually our tool allows you to store all the information that you specified for your conversion. <clears throat> like the source of DBC DSN. And the rest information like uh, the username and the password. So, and you can use it, uh, you can re reuse it uh, without uh, having to specify all this information once again. Okay, uh, you specify all the information here that is required to uh, <clears throat> uh, build the object in the target database. Uh, specify the export directory. So, and uh, now on migration status page, you can see all the export. Uh, actually, the same information you can review in uh, SQLways.log file after the conversion. You can view the export by clicking view export button. And here you can see all the 
uh, in SQL ways uh, log file you can review the whole export. You can see the number of uh, objects for conversion, all the statistics, the number of uh, rows exported. Uh, and you can see here as well whether there were any uh, issues on the export uh, stage. Uh, also you can see here, for example, the SQL Waste node. Uh, some procedures were created, uh, are, are specified as not valid in the source database. Uh, so we also specify this information, SQL Waste log file, for your notice. Uh, here you can also review the batch files generated. You can see that uh, the source uh, <coughs> object is specified uh, in the same file and is commented. And you can compare uh, the source and the target objects uh, here in, in one file without having to uh, go to the source database, to Oracle database, and review the uh, DDL of the table. Uh, after the export, you can run the uh, import into the SQL Server database. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, after the import, you can see the, uh, you can review the import in the SQL Ways IMP log file. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> uh, as I've already told you, the SQL Waste Wizard is used for the database conversion. It connects to the SOAR database and uh, exports all the objects from the SOAR database. But we also have uh, two more tools that are intended to use for the scripts conversion and for uh, application scripts conversion as well. So uh, first let me uh, tell you about Studio, SQL Waste Studio. Uh, you can see that you can uh, convert a uh, script from source to target, uh, the left and the right pane, by specifying the source database as a target database for the conversion, and by clicking Run. So on the right pane, you can see immediately, you can see the result of the conversion. So SQL Studio is intended for a single script conversion, and also we have SQL Ways Commander tool that is used for scripts conversion. So you can specify multiple scripts here by using shift K, for example, in the source and convert them directly into target by specifying Oracle and SQL Server as a target and clicking Run. Uh, <clears throat> when you confirm the conversion, Okay, it shows you the statistics that none of the scripts failed for conversion. And you can review the source by clicking F3 and the target. Uh, by clicking F3 in the right pane and compare the results as well here. So. These two tools are used for scripts conversion uh, only. They are not connecting to the database and don't uh, retrieve any additional information for the conversion. So actually we uh, uh, <coughs> recommend to use uh, SQL Waste Wizard and convert objects from uh, the database. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for your attention and I apologize for this uh, short technical problem. Now let me pass the word to Redgate uh, colleagues to proceed further.
Okay, uh, thank you, Michal, uh, and thank you uh, to your team for, for going through that. It's, it's always quite tricky with a, with a live uh, uh, migration, uh, but uh, I think it was great to, to see that in action, and uh, uh, hopefully it's given you, given everybody watching the webinar and, and joining us today, uh, kind of, sort of a, a nice idea on, on how uh, using uh, tools and, and companies' expertise uh, obviously, you can facilitate a migration uh, quite easily. Uh, uh, I hope it's also given you some some ideas and, and uh, some things that you need to look out for uh, and to consider if you're actually going to be migrating uh, yourself. Uh, so I just want to uh, finish off uh, this side of the presentation uh, before we, we go on to the Q and A with uh, just a sort of a round up of, of a few things. And so. So the next steps for, for you if you're actually interested uh, in working with Redgate or Aspira further, or if you're actually looking to do a migration yourself. So you can try the deployment suite for Oracle, uh, which that is the, the Redgate product. You can try, the, try that uh, free of charge for 14 days. It is a full trial with absolutely no obligation on that. It, will, it does include uh, the schema compare uh, tool, which uh, my colleague Tom showed you. Uh, and also data compared for Oracle as well, uh, as well as a, a new beta program uh, that we've got out, which is uh, Schema Doc, which, which generates schema documentation. Uh, the products support Oracle 9i, 10G, and uh, 11G. Uh, we offer full support throughout the, evalu the, the evaluation, uh, so you have access to our full support team uh, uh, if you have, do have any problems. Uh, generally speaking, though, I mean you, you should be able to install. Uh, download, visit our website, install it, get up and running uh, quite easily. Uh, various uh, uh, pricing depending on the uh, country uh, that you're in, but uh, you can see here US dollars at 395 uh, for the individual tools. Uh, if you buy the tools together in the deployment suite, there's a reduction there. You can see US dollars at uh, 595. Uh, there are further savings we made on five and ten license packs. All of that information is available on the Redgate website. You can generate a quote, you can have a look at pricing uh, and find out a little bit more uh, about the tools. We've got a number of, of customers, uh, obviously, that are using the products at the moment. Uh, you probably recognize the top company, Hewlett Packard. Uh, this is a, senior, uh, a quote from a senior application developer. Again, that there is more feedback, including these quotes, on the Redgate website. Uh, if you'd like to contact us, uh, we've got some numbers there. So these are our direct numbers. Uh, this will get through to the Oracle team at Redgate, which sticks to the UK and Europe number, uh, UK free phone, and the USA, USA toll-free number as well. Uh, for emails, please email oracletools.info at uh, red-gate.com. Once again, all of this information is available on the Redgate website uh, within the Oracle section, which is uh, red-gate.com forward slash oracle-development. Uh, very easy to, to navigate through our site anyway, so if you just go to redgate.com, I'm sure you'll be able to find the, the Oracle section. If you'd like to speak further with Michal and anybody at Aspira, uh, I've got some contact details here, so that's uh, Michal's direct. Uh, cell number. Uh, you can also connect with Michal via Skype and uh, via email as well, sales.worldwide at aspira.com and the website is uh, aspira.com. Uh, of course I noticed here there is uh, a nice little offer for anybody that is considering uh, running a migration or purchasing uh, the SQLway licenses uh, in May. Uh, the team will get a 10% discount on all SQL wage licenses and conversion services, uh, as long as you mention uh, this webinar, of course. Uh, slightly different, I guess, the follow-up with Aspira compared to Redgate. Uh, with Redgate, visit our website, download tools. With Aspira, you probably want to talk a little bit more about uh, your project uh, and let them uh, advise you uh, and assist you in, in uh, preparing the database for migration uh, and using the tools and, and working through the migration with you. Uh, and of course, everybody from the Aspire team will be on hand to help you with that. Uh, 
Okay, so we've had uh, some questions already posted, uh, which I'm going to going to read out now. Uh, but if you do have some questions uh, that you'd like to ask either Redgate or Aspira, uh, please uh, type them into your question uh, box on the uh, Ghost Meeting uh, console now. Okay, so the first question I have uh, is for uh, the Aspire team, and that is from Colin Robinson. Thank you, Colin. Colin, uh, what is the biggest database that you have migrated? In terms of data, uh, we we've been working with terabytes, and uh, about the business logic elements such as uh, triggers, functions, and and. Uh, Procedures. We we've been working with a thousand of these business logic elements. I believe like five, seven, or to ten thousand uh, procedures, triggers, and functions. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, next question is from David Winshafel. Uh Can SQL Ways uh, handle connect by and sequences? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, as for sequences, uh, uh, we convert them to SQL Server to identity columns. Uh, so if sequences are used in uh, uh, columns uh, as a default values, so they are converted to identity. Uh, we've got another question from Colin. Thank you again, Colin. Uh, how does the size of the code files compare between pre and post migration? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing uh, Colin is referencing an Oracle to SQL migration. So, uh, as for code itself, uh, for stored procedures, we don't have any uh, comparison tool. But as for data, uh, we have a comparison tool that uh, compares the source and the target uh, <coughs> uh, data in the source and the target databases. Uh, uh, um, the only thing so we have in studio uh, <coughs> compar uh, comparison tool so it shows you uh, the source and the target uh, in places where the changes were made. And just a sm just want to add a small note uh, here. Uh, you're welcome to visit our website and you can download the latest version of the product and uh, for, for a free trial. And we are offering uh, also three, uh, 30 days configuration assistance for free. And uh, another question, question here from uh, Samir. Uh, thank you, Samir. Uh, how is the impact of database changes on the application code analyzed? Uh, you know, it, it, it's a bit like two, two general questions because uh, each migration project is individual, so there is no certain rule for, for this migration type that uh, the behavior of the database and the application is absolutely different for each project. That's why we, we, need, to, we need to analyze uh, the source code and the source application first and later on we will be able to make any predictions in terms of behavior of target application and target database. Okay, so, so that's, all, that's all, the, all the questions that are uh, in the uh, dialog box at the moment. Uh, I'll just leave it for a, sort of a few more seconds if, if anybody does have a, a question they would like to ask either Aspire uh, or Redgate. Uh, please, can you type your questions in now? Uh, we'll be wrapping up shortly. Okay, so a question from uh, Malcolm uh, Leckie. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, how do you handle Oracle provided packages like UTL underscore file. So uh, as for the uh, <coughs> Oracle provided packages, so uh, uh, the in most cases individual conversion is required here. Uh, so uh, <coughs> some cases can be automated, but uh, <coughs> so each conversion is individual, as Mikhail stated, and uh, uh, we need to see how the uh, for example, UTL file is used, and uh, how we can emulate this the same conversion on target database. Thank you. Okay, so uh, no more questions have been, have been put in. Uh, so we're going to wrap things up. 
Uh, everybody will be sent a recording of this, of this webinar, uh, so you'll be able to see our direct contact details on there. Uh, but any questions that, that do uh, spring to mind for you uh, after this session, please do not hesitate to either contact uh, myself uh, at Redgate or Mihal at Aspira. Uh, obviously, it would be easier if you want, if you want to direct Redgate questions to Redgate and Aspira questions to Aspira, but please be assured that, that, that Mihal and myself, we, we will communicate uh, if you just want to drop a load of questions on one email and send it to, to either of us. Okay. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for, for joining us today. I hope you've uh, enjoyed the, the session, and I hope it's uh, given you a good insight into a, a project of migrating from Oracle uh, to SQL Server. Uh, so I would just like to say uh, goodbye now, uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure Mihal would like to say a few words before we leave as well. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for your, for your time today, and I really appreciate your time. I, uh, once again, I do apologize for this technical inconvenience and for these technical problems. At the same time, it was it was reasonable to see how effective and uh, how 